Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. Let's get started with our hosts, Linda McKissick and Dana Gentry. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. I'm Linda McKissick. And I'm Dana Gentry. Good morning, Dana. And I just kind of wanted to let everyone know we're doing a special additional podcast um, just because we got a lot of uncertainty and things going on. And um, yeah. we're just going to talk to people about staying strong during the COVID-19. I think we got a lot of people that are just every day that goes by that we have one more day and uncertainty yeah. when it's going to end. Um, I think it's a challenge. It's a challenge for a lot of reasons. So, um, yeah. you know, for me, you know, I know personally, I've tried to pay really close attention to, to my feelings and kind of what, what's coming up every day. And, and it's, what I've noticed is it's real hard not to kind of just go to the worst case of, of this or not. I think the not knowing how long it's going to last, um, is probably been the hardest part. You know, I, we can pretty much endure anything if we know, and there will be an end in sight. There always is. I mean, this, yeah. nothing lasts forever. Right. Um, and so, but the uncertainty of knowing how long, uh, and I always say this in every downturn and shift, uh, and this one is so different than all mm -hmm. the others for many reasons. Um, but there are similarities too, but I've always said the hardest part about any shift that that I remember going through was not knowing where the bottom was. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I don't know how far down, that. you know, uh, but I think any of us, no matter how far the bottom is, we can always, you know, we can always, whatever we've learned in the past to get us where we are, we can use those same skills and get back to where we were faster. Yeah, I agree. I think that the, I think the biggest thing right now is just uh, not having an, not having answers. And so when people don't have answers, then that leads to kind of, uh, anxious, <laughs> anxious thoughts and anxiety and fear and all those things. So, um, yeah. And I think, you know, it's, you kind of toggle back and forth between, um, actually I talked to one of my friends this morning and she said, I feel like I'm on this emotional roller coaster. She said yesterday, I was like, everything's great. This too shall pass. And she's like, and then I cried last night and my eyes are swollen this morning. Cause she's like, honestly, then I'm thinking, I really don't know when this will pass. I'm like, well, those are valid thoughts. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think that's so true. And you know, um, I think certain things make our mindset harder to control. And so for me, one of the things that I've, that I know about myself is, um, my tendency when I get nervous or anxious or anything is to eat. And that's the worst thing I can do. Cause then I'm going to feel even 10 times worse. So yeah, same. You know, what can we control? You know, we can use this time to control our health and our energy. Yep. And, but I'm going to tell you, I saw a thing on Facebook today said, I'm trying to practice uh, social uh, distance between my refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that's so true, but it's, I mean, and, and I know y'all, y'all know, I love uh, intermittent fasting, but it's a perfect time to try a 24 hour, 36 hour fast. Yeah. And what I've found is if I can stay busy, then it's a lot easier. And also I feel so much better. My head doesn't seem to want to go in horrible thoughts of, 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 of you know, you know, cause you go from, I, you know, I go from hearing on one hand, 75 people have canceled their uh, trip to Branson to the cabins. So I go, Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> nobody can stay at the cabins to, well, 10 more people did sign up to go to the cabins. And I yeah. personally was there last week because we drove back from Ohio and decided to go the long route and stop in Branson. And I thought, you know, if I was going to be stuck somewhere, these darn cabins would be a great place to be stuck. We have a hot tub there. And yeah. we came together as a family because at a cabin, you don't really have all the other things. And we laughed and we just, you know, we laughed till our sides hurts. And mm -hmm. so I think we just got to say, okay, what are the cool things? All the kids are loving this. I haven't yeah. seen a kid yet that said, man, I want this virus to be over. <laughs> you know, they're home with their families. They're not having to go to school. You know, they're probably paying, playing more board games than they've got to play in a long time. So I just think, you know, for me, I have to say, what can I control that I know in the long run, I'll be so happy if I didn't let it spiral out of control. And for me, it's health and energy. So yesterday yeah. I did not want to go get on my Peloton. Um, I did not <laughs> want to do it, but um, it just so happened my trainer reached out about that time and said, Hey, what are you doing for exercise? Which, you know, of course motivated me. And so I said, okay, I'm going to go for 10 minutes. I'm just going to go get on 10 minutes. I don't care if I just walk. And I, of course I wound up running for 30 and then I felt good. And then I wasn't worried about eating. So I'm, I completed yeah. a 36 hour fast. I feel amazing. Oh, wow. 
you know, and it was hard. There were moments that were hard, but I just either went and did something or got busy or thought, okay, you know what, you can do this. And, uh, I think that's what we have to do is say, what are the things that are going to help us the most? And I think right now, health and energy is the best thing we can, we can spend a little bit of time working on during this. Yep. I agree. I think that's awesome. I, I'm the same. We've, I've been trying to, and you know, it's Adam and I have joked for the last couple of days because we went to the grocery and we bought things that we never buy. I mean, I bought, got Fruit Loop cereal with marshmallows in it. And, and one night that's what I had for dinner. And then I thought, okay, I've got to get this together. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's easy. It's easy to control that. Um, it it's well, it's not. Uh, what is it? It's not um, simple, but it's or what's the what's the? Oh, it's simple but not easy. Yeah, simple but not easy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was. And looking I think for. the other thing for me is, um, you know, just really spending this time in prayer and you know, yeah. being understanding that God is in control of everything. He always is. Mm -hmm. And so just to know that he's in control and that I just need to continue to reach out and pray that he can take this all away. Cause he does have the power, whether he'll choose to do it or not. I don't know. Um, I did sign up for Max Lucado's anxious for nothing study I, program. I oh, I read that. That's a great thing to do. Oh. He's doing a seven week or some kind of week uh, study on it right now. Great and timing. So I just remember from going through the, the, terrible times that we went through when my son-in-law was dying. Mm -hmm. I never felt closer to God than during that period. So I yeah. think for some of us, this is a wake up call to get reconnected. I know for me it is and to yeah. stay connected and to, you know, just trust and have faith and read his word and, and know that it all, we know how it ends. <laughs> you know, it's like mm -hmm. watching a movie you watched before. We know what happens at the very end. It's this messy middle that scares the crap out of us. And so we're going to be fine. Uh, I think it's going to end a lot faster than, than we, than we were currently thinking it might. Uh, and you know, we just have to find the opportunities in all of it. And I think for me, you know, going back to what are the things that really, um, help my mindset stay in a good place? Uh, prayer is one, listen to motivation. I love listening to podcasts and yeah. honestly, just listening to some podcasts that I haven't had time to listen to in the past has really helped, or maybe just some music. Um, when I do my Peloton, I listen to their music because I'm not, I've gotten off of music so much since there's so much information on podcasts and everything, but sometimes just to not have anything going in your brain. And then the other thing is I've limited the amount of time I watch the TV. I wait, I get one real quick update and they're going to repeat it 550 times. Mm -hmm. So I get it once and then I just get away from the TV. Yeah. So that was one of the things I wrote down on my list. Um, I really think that we have to be careful about what we put into our brains during, during a crisis, during times like this and what we're taking in because our mindset is what's going to make or break us. And honestly, when you're in a negative mind space uh, or mindset or, you know, that it affects your immune system too. And yeah. so and we need to keep our immune system strong and we can do all of those things by um, you know, washing our hands and doing all that stuff. And the most important thing is keeping, keeping your mind in a great space. And for me, you know, John Maxwell put it really kind of a, in a, in a great way that, that didn't seem like it was coming off in a nasty way, but a lot of people will use something like this for their own personal agenda. And we have a lot of politics going on and just all that stuff right now. And so I think really watching your source, you know, where are you getting your information from? and making sure that that's a valid source and it's not, there's not a possibility that it could be someone's, you know, own agenda or own personal opinion of something. It's got to be a fact. Um, and so for me, yeah, limiting watching TV, there's, I can, I can watch that and get very into it. And so I just have been, <laughs> been trying not to, and then being really purposeful about who I'm following and what I'm listening to and, and those types of things. Um, and, and for me, it's a lot of pastor it, John Maxwell, first and foremost. I mean, he's been doing those virtual, uh, seminars every day and I have just taken pages and pages and pages of notes. Um, and then following a lot of just the pastors that I love and just watching who I'm, who I'm listening to and who's, uh, you know, advice, I guess, for lack of better words that I'm actually taking. Um, cause there's so many people putting messages out right now. <laughs> yeah, so true. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think too, because having gone through many shifts and downturns and different things, I always think there's things you, that you learn from these that really make you better in the future. And so one of the things I've, that I've kind of been thinking about is, you know, with our market centers, the beautiful thing about, because our company has, you put, you know, 
four to six months in reserve, that makes you have more comfort. So the lessons I said is, you know, what are the wake up calls that I needed to get from this? Where am I spending too much money? I had my CFO send over the sheets of all the automatic drafts that, that we, that, yep. we've, that we've been doing and half of them, I don't even know what the heck they are. So, you know, using this time to go, okay, where am I just really been spending just to spend? And that's crazy. And then uh, where the expenses are creeping up, you know, I think, you know, all of us are going to pay more attention to where do we get some passive income, Yeah. Um, you know, for in the future, passive income that, that comes in no matter what happens in the world. And then, you know, where are we making sure that we, that we have savings accounts and reserve accounts, not only for our businesses, but for our own personal lives. You know, if, if, if each of us had six months of personal money in reserve, um, this would feel totally different you know, for a lot of people. And so I think there's always lessons and there's always things that I know for myself. I go, I don't want to be in this position again. And when I get out of this, here's the one, two, three, four things I'm going to make sure that I start taking care of. And I do. And so we did that from when we lost everything in the late eighties. That's why we wound up working on passive income as much as we were working on cash flow. So I think there's a lot of lessons that we can say, okay, when we get out of this, Um, And sometimes it just helps me to sit down and start working on the plan right now. Mm -hmm. Even though we're not in a situation to do anything about it, if I could start to build a plan of when we get through this, and we will, we always will, uh, what are some of the main things I want to make sure that I I do? How much money would I like in reserve next time something like this happens? Those kind of situations, I think, are, 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 for me, they help me feel like I'm in control of something to, to keep from being in this particular situation in the future. Yeah. Yep. I agree with all that. I've been cutting a ton of stuff. Um, and it doesn't feel good sometimes to cut and do that stuff, but you know, the reality is when you've been through one shift and you didn't cut, then you'll never make that mistake again. Um, and so it's funny. I love what, I think it's Brian Gubernick with Keller Williams who says this all the time, but every agent should lose their credit card every couple of months, Yeah, <laughs> like lose it, fake lose it because then they know exactly what, um, they know exactly what what's on there that you know they may not even have known that they that they were that they were being charged so yeah just going through and cutting things and I mean we've even talked about you know maybe we don't need to do an elaborate vacation <laughs> this this year like we do every single year and and what that would look like to just come together as a family and do something cheaper um, so I think looking at all those things you know one thing that I keep hearing um, keep hearing a lot of pastors say is uh, there are there are people who will just completely kind of maintain during this. And then there are people who will use, use this as an opportunity for something bigger. And I love the quote and I can't remember, it was either Andy Stanley or John Maxwell who said this, but um, to keep thinking I was born for this, like I was born for an opportunity like this, just because it's, you know, seen as a crisis um, or something negative you have to switch your mindset to think you were, you were born for this. So what can you do to bring value to other people and to help other people? And I think for realtors, as much as we are a face to face, you know, business, this is going to teach us things that we probably needed to, uh, to adopt to a long time ago. Um, or maybe we've been, you know, procrastinating doing it. Um, but technology, it's just so, it's so funny for me to see some of my friends who, um, you know, aren't in real estate or, or in an organization and they're using zoom <laughs> for the yeah. first, you know, they're, they're like hot. They're wanting to zoom. They're like, we downloaded zoom. <laughs> yeah. sister, Adam's sister said, we just figured out how to do zoom, get on and talk to us. And we were like, okay, press this button, do that. And they're like, how'd y'all know this? We we're like, we've been doing zoom for years. They were like, what in the world? So I think it's going to teach us to, to have better ways of communication and to do things that uh, my home group, which by the way, uh, we're, you're supposed to be very diversified. We're not that diversified. Uh, we're all baby boomers with our kids grown up. So we were supposed to have some young people in there. And now we wish we did because we all did our home group meeting by zoom. It was, I wish I had recorded it. It would have been the most hysterical thing you've ever witnessed in your life. Of course, What's we've been home group? Meeting- like you're a small group. Yeah. Small group. We call okay. it home group. Yeah. So, and you know, of course we've been using zoom at KW for a long time, so we knew how to use it, but everybody else was hysterical (laughs) watching and trying to figure out it it was just too funny, but I totally agree. I think especially in the real estate industry, we have such a tendency to believe that we have to do so many things. 
uh, and I'm just thinking of an agent right now, I'm going to reach out to her as soon as this is over because she must be having convulsions. She does so much that she personally thinks she has to do and touch. Mm. And now all of a sudden when you can't, you have to, be, you have to really, you're forced to figure out other ways to do things remotely. Uh, and I think some of this should stick and we should just pretend that all this is good. We need to social distance for the rest of our lives, right? So yeah. why drop off something or take something to someone when I can electronically get it to them? And so I think there's a lot of great things. And, you know, and I, again, I've been through enough of these to know that there's opportunity in every one, but our mindset has to be in such a place that we're yeah. looking for the opportunity. So when the door shuts one way, where's the opportunity? And if we train ourselves to look for the opportunity, there's always great opportunities uh, that come through some kind of situation like this for those people that are looking for it and are ready to take advantage of it. So ask yourself every day, where's the opportunity here? Where's, where's a place that something is needed that I could step into that void and create the opportunity? Maybe not for today, maybe for later. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe it won't affect me today, but maybe for later, where, where are those opportunities and, and take advantage of those. You know, I just read something that um, a couple of days ago that I jotted down that said, nothing will cause you more anxiety than focusing on what you can't control. And some of this, we, we can't control it. I mean, there are going to be things that we can't control. We can't control, you know, government uh, mandates or uh, businesses being forced to close. And um, we can't control those things. Um, however, what we can do is make a list of the things that we can control uh, actually, I saw something super funny on Instagram that said, I feel bad for all those husbands that have been saying for the last several years, um, I'll do that when I get time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I know, but it made me think, I mean, there are things that, you know, we can all do um, and, and make a list of things that we can control and things that we can do. Um, and as uh, John Maxwell would say, make lemonade, you know, with it instead of focusing on the things that you can't control because they're just going to give us more anxiety. Um, and then, and then I've always heard that a lot of times when something like this kind of happens, a shift or I hate the word crisis. I'm so sick of that word, by the way, but a crisis for lack of better words, the reason that sometimes they stink so bad is because they're distracting. They take us off course. Mm -hmm. And really, if you think about it, it's, if you think of the, of the opposite of that, it's, um, traction. So traction is the opposite of distract of distraction and traction actually moves you forward. You're making progress. Um, it draws you towards what you want in life instead of being distracted. When you're distracted, your mind wonders, you have negative thinking. You think of all the what ifs, um, you're, you know, you're dominated by fear and actually, um, I don't know who it was that recently said this. Everybody has, I guess, but fear spreads faster than the dang virus does. Oh yeah. So, yeah. So as leaders, I think we've got to help our people get traction during, during the distraction of all of this stuff. Um, and the first step of that is just getting out of the negativity. So whatever we have to do to listen, no, I'm sure nobody, <laughs> there can't be very many people that hate to sit home and do and be quarantined than you and I. So we get it. Um, but we just, I think, you know, we just got to know that, that this too shall pass and, and be able to make a list of what we can control and, and focus on those things and find out where the opportunity can be. Oh, absolutely. You know, I think, um, you get in and, and getting up every day and pretending you're going into the office, even if you're going into just a yep. separate room in your house. Um, I know for me, <laughs> I mean, I'm one of those people that I can go from super productive to laying on the couch, eating bonbons. And so <laughs> home has never been a, and it's so interesting because I do work from home, but I get to get out. And so this, this, you know, you know, not really getting out that much. One of the things that I've did is make a list of all the things that I've been wanting to learn how to do online. I love that. Like the grocery shopping. I don't know how to go online and do the grocery shopping. And oh yeah. The click it thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to figure that out. So there, there's kind of some good things in here that, that, that I'm thinking, okay, well now from now on, uh, plus I'm ordering more from Amazon than I, you know, what I would normally go to Costco or somewhere to get, I'm just going to order from Amazon or somewhere online yep. and, and get it delivered so that I can limit. Cause I really want to try to do our part to limit, you know, being around people or anything we can for the time period that they're asking us to do it. Just, just, I feel like that's, that's our responsibility. And if I can do that, then maybe we'll all shorten the time that we have to be. Well, and I think actually, I think it's important that you brought that up because 
you know, and my mindset's kind of shifted doing this in the beginning. I was like, nah, that's fine. You know, and then, and as it's, as the days have progressed and watching who I really follow, um, I have a lady that used to be in a, a mastermind group that I know, and she's an ER doctor in one of the, the largest hospitals in the country. And she did a Facebook live last night and she's somebody who she's not an alarmist. She has no agenda, you know, like I, I trust what she says. And she said, you know, guys, this is why, this is why we have to flatten the curve. We keep hearing that and you have to do your part in doing it because they're going to, they, it's a real possibility that they could get to the point where our doctors are, are choosing what people go on ventilators or not because just because of the amount of ventilators that there are. And she said, you know, as physicians, we don't ever want to have to think about making that call. Yes. And that's why it's so important to, even though you really want to go out and do stuff or you, you know, want to be together, you want to hang out if you can just sacrifice that for a little bit and social distance because, and she made a good point until it affects somebody. It's kind of like everything else until it affects you or somebody that you know, or that you love or that you care about. It's yeah. like, it doesn't exist. Yeah. It's um, like it's an out there somewhere to some other people. Yeah. You're exactly yeah. Right. Yeah. So that made me just really, I mean, we've been staying in anyway, but that just really made me think about, you know, being really, really careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think there's still some areas where, you know, if you can get outside and go in your backyard and just get, a, you know, 30 minutes of sunshine, if you've got sunshine, we thank the Lord are going to have sunshine today, which helps me a lot. Yeah. There's just something about gloomy days on top of all of this, but me too. Um, you know, and, and we can still go outside and go for a run. You know, I'm not going to, you're not going to be with around people and all that stuff. So whatever you can do, I think the parks are all closed, but you know, you can go out to the backyard or there's trails, you know, that you can go to, whatever you got to do to kind of keep your sanity. And, you know, plus I just like the alone time to think through, you know, something I might be missing in the midst of, of all the angst and everything else. Yeah. But, I mean, the, there's certain things I truly believe that are going to be true that I've seen them be true every single time. There's always opportunity when, when one door shuts, there's always another door that opens and there always will be things that we learn from this, that moving forward will make our lives better and make any other situation like this in the future, a lot less impactful because we will learn things to do and prepare mm -hmm. in our finances and our home life and everything else. Uh, like toilet paper, we'll all have a whole lot more toilet paper when all this is over, I'm sure, <laughs> for whatever reason that the hoarding of the toilet paper happened. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think we're going to be more grateful. I'm, I'm grateful for things that, you know, I might have said I was grateful for lately, but mm -hmm. I thought more about them. I thought, you know, I'm grateful that my family is healthy. Yeah. I'm sad that, you know, that we're not all together, but I'm grateful that I know that they're all safe and they're all healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm grateful for the little things. I'm grateful that, you know, I'm grateful for things around my house that I haven't used or thought about in a while. I haven't looked at my lake outside in a long time. Now I get up in the morning and think, thank you, Lord. This is a beautiful view. I'm mm -hmm. happy to have it. Here's my coffee. I've got coffee. You know, there's so yeah. many little things to be grateful for. So I just think that, you know, keep your mindset where it needs to be uh, positive, listening to great people that are going to not, you know, induce fear in your life and uh, control what you can control. Your health and energy is mm -hmm. going to determine what your mind does. I know if I go more than two days without exercising, I really get in kind of a down place. Yeah. And so I just made a rule my, for myself that every two days, if I haven't been on the treadmill or I haven't ran, I'm going to do something because I know those things are imperative. Uh, and then I'm also trying to say, okay, look, I, I'm not going to go to the store and spend my time or risk anything buying junk food. I'm only going to buy fruits or vegetables. I am going to learn online shopping, <laughs> and, uh, you know, just look for the, the opportunities and the blessings in here. And you know what, if you, if you get to a bad place, pick up the phone and call somebody. Yep. Yeah. That's a great point. Yep. Um, well, two things I wanted to add real fast, just to remind people, cause we're going to drop this as a special episode, but the, the last thing that I had to share is, um, as leaders. And I love the thought of thinking some, sometimes people may think I'm not a leader, well, if you have a family or you have kids or you have people around you or you are involved in your community um, or you are involved in a charity or a small group or whatever, you're a leader. We are all a leader in a certain way. And um, I, lo I really love what John Maxwell says when he says leaders show up with hope. And there's a difference between being optimistic versus having hope. Optimistic mm -hmm. means that you have the belief that things are going to get better. 
Yes. Hope means that together we're going to go make things better. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so it's not just the belief and it takes a great deal of courage to have the hope that, to offer hope instead of just the optimism part of things. And, um, and so I just think that's important to think about and to share because uh, even if you believe things are going to get better, you got to have the hope that you're going to go and make things better no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's, yeah. that's a great point for us to end on. And I just want to remind you that if you have a question or a comment or a topic that you would like Dana and I to talk about, reach out to us and submit it to us at uh, info at everything life and real estate. And if you'd like to be a guest on our podcast or know someone who'd be an amazing guest on our podcast, be sure and reach out and let us know. And we'd love for you to give us a review. Um, that would be an amazing gift for Dana and I to have a great review on our podcast. And then best of all, what we'd really love for you to do is share this with someone that you know and care about that might could use some good positive um, place to listen uh, to a podcast and get some helpful information. So Dana, I want you, I would say, uh, stay inside, but I know you're going to, but stay inside, uh, keep positive. And I guess you and I'll be talking either later in the week or next week. Yeah, we will. And one thing, wait, this is, we're going to drop this specially tomorrow actually. And so, yeah, so Thursday and Friday of this week, which are uh, March the 26th and 27th, we are doing um, a big live stream training event for realtors at all companies. Um, and actually Linda, um, Linda and I both are going to be teaching a 20 minute section, uh, on the first day on Thursday. So if you are interested in that, geez, I'm trying to think of the best way. If you're listening to this on Wednesday and you're interested in joining on Thursday or Friday, um, just shoot me an email. Can you put a link, can you put a link at the bottom? Yeah, we'll put a link in the show notes. Great idea. We'll put a link in the show notes. And if you have any additional issues or anything, then just um, you can email me, Dana Gentry at kw.com. And I'll make sure that you get the webinar link and that you are able to be a part of it because it's going to be fantastic. We've got a lot of really great speakers from the industry being on. Yeah. And if you're thinking of creative things and cool things to take advantage of being this uh, inside your house and all locked up, be sure and share it to us. Share it with us at info at everything life and real estate. And we'll share some great ideas uh, on our future podcast. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. Talk to you soon. Okay. Talk to you later. Thanks. Be sure to subscribe for more business strategies and tactics to inspire you to live an abundant real estate life. Don't forget to rate and review so we can bring you the best content. Find this and other valuable information at everythinglifeandrealestate.com.